A vertical reading is a reading of three same numbered cantos from each of the three canticles of Dante's Divine Comedy. Uh, the Divine Comedy is in three parts, um, Inferno, a journey through hell, Purgatorio, a journey through purgatory, and Paradiso, a journey through paradise. And what we've asked our lecturers to do uh, in this series is to read a canto from each of those three journeys together. So starting with Inferno 1, Purgatorio 1 and Paradiso 1 and then just continuing right the way through the volume. Yeah, yeah and the reason we, we thought to call them vertical, because there are other options, they've been called parallel, they've had all different kinds of names, and that um, we liked this notion of the vertical by thinking also of an art historical context. So if you think about the Baptistry of San Giovanni in Florence, a place that Dante knew really well, you have these horizontal bands of narrative placed one over the other, and of course you're meant to read vertical correspondences uh, through those bands as well. So um, that was one way of thinking. George also has long had a poster in his office <laughs> with <laughs> the Divine Comedy spread out in precisely these kinds of bands. Yeah. And so the, the, the notion of the vertical came through through these, kind of, these two kinds of visual images mm -hmm. for setting up the poem. Um, and it's one way we wanted our readers, our, uh, our, our lecturers, to think about the problem was to think about this notion of verticality and to put it in those terms. And it led to some very interesting discussions, I think. Yeah. Well, this is something that both George and I had been thinking about. It's not something that hasn't been done before. Um, in fact, uh, there, there are volumes of the comedy in which um, some of these correspondences have already been explored. A number of scholars and critics have written articles proposing connections between individual cantos. But this is, we, we, there's never been any attempt to look at the entire poem and all of these correspondences across all the cantos of the poem in a systematic fashion. So George had been doing some of this in his research. I had been trying this out in teaching. I found it was a very interesting teaching tool um, with undergraduates. And we both kind of thought this might be a moment to draw together a team of experts to bring together a collaboration. We had an ongoing collaboration with uh, the universities of Notre Dame and Leeds and their Dante centers. And uh, we thought this might be a moment to really kind of bring a big group together and explore the whole thing systematically across the whole poem as a kind of experiment to see what would come forth when we really tried to do this in a case-by-case -case, uh, version. It had been done, as I said, in, in moments before in different kind of isolated ways, but uh, this is a first attempt at getting through the whole thing in you know, the vertical proceeding. Yeah, and we've been really lucky, you know, to have it hosting here in, in Trinity uh, over the last four years, it's been really nice, yeah. Um, well, I think there have been two really um, uh, great things about vertical reading that we've discovered as part of the experiment. First of all, obviously, undiscovered connections between uh, the three canticles. But also, because we've had such a, a wonderfully rich um, array of speakers, um, each of those speakers has also um, given new perspectives on major themes. So I think we really hope from subsequent volumes as well um, the students, scholars, um, general people who, who have an interest in Dante um, can, uh, can get a new uh, approach to the poem, but also explore those key themes which, which make Dante um, such a, a wonderful read. Yes, it's a way of um, starting over and exploring the poem afresh, because mm. I think a lot of people, no matter how long they've been working on Dante, when they come back and they say, well, what if I just read Inferno 3 against Purgatorio 3 against Paradiso 3, and kind of throw out all of our you know, ideas that we bring with us and just start afresh with those three cantos, something new always comes up. Yeah. And in every reading, sometimes scholars have said, oh, I don't know if it really worked out as well this time, but there's always been something really new, and in the end, exciting. Mm. And so I, I would expect more of that excitement to carry on over the next two volumes, but also uh, the sustained reflection on how we read Dante, what we bring to our reading of Dante, the ways in which Dante might have expected us to read his poem, um, whether he would have ever imagined us to be doing some work like this, whether it's a poem that is meant to be read through in the way you might read a novel, or a poem that's meant to be uh, picked up in various ways and read and by various mechanisms and means and modes. And so I think um, the, also the reflection on how we read um, as scholars coming from different kinds of approaches. I think the, the, this team of international scholars all have very different approaches to reading Dante. And we've asked each of them to fit into the constraints of this experiment, just 
to try it out. And yeah. I think the results have been very, very interesting to see what, what emerges in terms of methodologies and approaches. Yeah, and it's been the perfect time to do that. This is the 750th anniversary of Dante's birth. So to launch the first volume um, in that spirit of uh, looking at things in a different way, it's probably the poem which has been most commentated on for the last 750 years. Loads of commentaries, loads of scholarly. So it's just taking a fresh approach and seeing what comes out. And for both of us, I think that's what's been really exciting, seeing how each speaker brings something new to the enterprise. Well, this has been a key part of the venture from the very beginning. Um, it was really important to us that these be public lectures. We asked each of our speakers to pitch their reading to a general audience, to anyone who might be interested in knowing more, um, and we've tried to publicize as broadly as possible, so we've had a wonderful groups turn out for the lectures. Beyond that, we've videotaped each of the lectures and put those videos online, because again, we wanted the lectures to be available to as many people as possible. Um, so the notion of publishing in open access was really the, the, the idea that made the most sense to us and made the most sense for what we're trying to do, and that we wanted to um, allow this experiment and the results, the interest, really interesting and fruitful results of this experiment to be available to as many people as possible and uh, we wanted to make sure that anybody interested would be able to view the video but also to then read uh, the contributions. We asked each of the speakers to revisit their lectures, come back and uh, write, up, um, write up something a, a bit more after, I guess after they had taken the time to think about their contribution, uh, the discussion had emerged, questions had been asked. Each, mm -hmm. the, each of the speakers kind of went back, revisited their contribution, and wrote it up in a new form. Uh, and we wanted that to be available to everyone as well. So the, so the notion that anyone can go online and read, uh, and read the whole volume there was really exciting to us. We want students on every level and enthusiasts on every level to be able to access the information there. And, we've, and it, the notion has always been that we want to share to yeah. share the results of what we've, uh, what everyone has brought forth together. So yeah, and although um, Heather's already said that um, vertical reading for single cantos have been done before, um, this is the first time that this method has been applied across the whole poem systematically, and it has been an experiment. But it's an ongoing experiment. We're hoping that um, scholars are going to continue to use this technique in their work. So the fact that all of these chapters are going to be freely available, um, easily accessible to scholars, enables this, this mode of reading to become part of um, the study of Dante. And also we have a, a, an online index of other vertical readings. So the collaborative enterprise can continue through the OBP publishing model and people can add more readings and refer to readings. So we're tremendously grateful to to OBP um, for making that possible and uh, enabling us to continue the, the project in, in that way.